Hi, today we're going to talk about eukaryotic cell structure and function. Before we do that, let's review. Uh, there are two main types of eukaryotic cells, um, animal cells and plant cells. Both animal cells and plant cells have three basic cell parts. They have a uh, cell membrane or a plasma membrane that surrounds the cell. Within that, they have cytoplasm with their organelles, and then they both have a nucleus which is responsible for carrying the genetic information or the DNA for the cell. Uh, let's take a closer look at animal cells. Here is a diagram of an animal cell. You will need to be able to label um, the cell parts um, on, let's say, a test or a quiz. So let's um, quickly review. Um, let's start with the nucleus in the center of the cell. Um, the nucleus um, holds the genetic information or the DNA um, for the cell. Within the nucleus, we have the nucleolus, which is responsible for um, producing ribosomes. Um, the nuclear envelope um, is just a membrane that um, holds um, the genetic information. Um, beyond the nucleus, we have the rough endoplasmic reticulum. The reason why it's called the rough endoplasmic reticulum is because it has ribosomes on it. So right here, we see that there are attached ribosomes onto our rough endoplasmic reticulum. Next, we have our centrioles. Our centrioles are usually located near the nucleus of the cell, and they're responsible for organization during cell division. They're responsible for actually pulling the chromosomes apart and making sure that each new daughter cell will get its own set of genetic information. Next is the mitochondria. The mitochondria um, is um, the site of cellular respiration for the cell. Onward, we have the Golgi apparatus, which is responsible for modifying and packaging proteins and other things for the cell. Um, again, we've got um, our cell membrane, which is responsible for um, allowing substances to move into and out of the cell, as well as protecting the cell. And we're going to actually spend some more time talking about the cell membrane. Um, in addition to ribosomes being found on the endoplasmic reticulum, they can also be found freely floating in the cytoplasm. So here we have some freely floating ribosomes as well. And then last but not least, we have the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum is responsible for the production of lipids or membrane lipids and detoxifying, um, detoxification of different um, substances that might enter the cell that might be harmful to the cell. So let's take a closer look at each one of these organelles. Here we have the nucleus. Again, it's the control center of the cell. It contains the cell's DNA, um, and the DNA is responsible for, um, it carries the code for pr the production of proteins. Um, it is housed within a membrane, um, that nuclear membrane. It's responsible for protecting um, the DNA of the cell. And again, in the center of the um, nucleus, we have the nucleolus, again, which is responsible for the production of uh, ribosomes. Next, we have ribosomes. Ribosomes are the site of protein synthesis, so they're responsible for actually taking, um, interpreting that genetic information that comes out of the nucleus, so that's RNA and they will um, read that RNA and will actually produce um, protein. So they'll string together different amino acids in order to create a protein. Um, ribosomes are the only non-membrane bound organelle. They're actually, in fact, made up of RNA and protein. And again, they can found, either be found on the um, endoplasmic reticulum, specifically the rough endoplasmic reticulum, or they can be scattered throughout the cytoplasm of the cell. Next, we have our endoplasmic reticulum. Um, depending on whether or not we are talking about rough endoplasmic reticulum or smooth endoplasmic reticulum, um, they each have their own function. The rough endoplasmic reticulum is responsible for assembling proteins that are going to be exported out of the cell. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum is responsible for assembling components that are going to be part of the plasma membrane or other membrane structures within the cell. Um, it's also responsible for detoxification of substances that might enter the cell. Um, for example, liver cells have a lot of smooth endoplasmic reticulum because the liver, again, is responsible for detoxifying 
um, substances that might enter your body. Next we have our Golgi apparatus. Our Golgi apparatus is responsible for modifying, sorting, and packaging proteins um, for either storage within the cell or for secretion out of the cell. Up next we have our lysosomes. Our lysosomes um, contain enzymes which are responsible for breaking down our macromolecules. So uh, lipids, carbohydrates, proteins, um, these enzymes are all going to be contained within the lysosome of the cell. Um, lysosomes can also be used to break down organelles that um, no longer are um, executing their job as well as they should be. So they're kind of um, the garbage disposal of the cell. Next we have our mitochondria. Our mitochondria is responsible for um, cellular respiration, so it's um, the powerhouse of the cell, if you will, and it's responsible for converting um, the chemical energy stored in food into cellular energy, ATP, um, for the cell to use. Since the cell can't use straight sugar or glucose, because we know that carbohydrates are responsible, is our main source of energy, since the cell can't use straight sugar, um, in order to power that, the mitochondria is responsible for breaking down that sugar and converting it into a substance that the cell can actually use. The cytoskeleton is responsible for giving the cell its shape, its internal organization, and it's also used in movement. It's made up of two um, fibers, um, microfilaments and microtubules, and um, the organelles are not stationary within the cell, um, but they can actually be moved sort of like a um, train track. So the organelles can be moved in different locations around the cell on these microtubules and these microfilaments. Our centrioles are responsible for, again, organizing cell division. Um, they are found in animal cells, but not in plant cells. Um, again, they're usually no located near the nucleus because they're responsible for making sure that each new daughter cell um, in the course of cell division gets their full set of chromosomes or DNA. Vacuoles are found in animal cells, but they're either found, um, they're either very small or they're completely absent. So vacuoles in animal cells are kind of hit or miss. You might find them, you may not find them. Um, what vacuoles are used for is they are used for storage and they can store things like water, salt, proteins, carbohydrates. Um, this example here in this diagram is showing a um, protist, a paramecium, and some of these um, organisms use vacuoles in order to pump out excess water out of the cell. So you might have a freshwater protist living in um, living in fresh water, so freshwater protus, and um, water will start to fill in um, or start to enter the cell, and the contractile vacuole is used to pump out that excess water so that the cell does not burst open. We'll take a closer look at osmosis and why that might happen a little bit later. So plant cells. Plant cells contain all of the organelles I just discussed, in addition to three others, and those three others are a vacuole. Plant cells have a large central vacuole, and its primary role is storage. It also can be used to support the cell, so if you think of big, tall um, trees or other big, tall plants, it can be used for support as well. Plant cells also have chloroplasts. This is one of the main differences between plant and animal cells. Chloroplasts are the site of photosynthesis. This means that they're responsible for capturing the energy um, from the sun and converting it into chemical energy or food. Um, it contains the green pigment chlorophyll, which is where plants get their greenish, um, greenish color from. Next, we have the cell wall. The cell wall, again, lies outside the cell membrane. Um, it's comprised of overlapping layers of cellulose and its job is to provide support and protection for the cell. So here in this diagram, we have um, the green portion, 
is the plant cell wall, and then this brown portion here lying inside the cell wall is our cell membrane. Just to recap, so we've got two main eukaryotic cell types, both plant cells and animal cells. Remember that plant cells are rectangular in shape, rectangular or square in shape. Um, they're usually larger in size than animal cells, and they contain a cell wall, a large central vacuole, and chloroplasts, whereas animal cells do not. Now, animal cells are circular or irregular in shape. They're usually smaller in size compared to plant cells. They don't have a cell wall, and they do have vacuoles, but again, those vacuoles are either very small or they're completely absent. This is a Venn diagram, again, just to show the cell structures found in both plant and animal cells. Again, most of the structures um, are found in both plant and animal cells, where again, only the cell wall, chloroplast, and vacuole are found in plant cells, and centrioles are only found in animal cells. To review, um, you should be able to, on a test or a quiz, be able to tell me what the two main eukaryotic cell types are, and those are plant cells and animal cells. You need to be able to distinguish between plant and animal cells, and you need to be able to identify the organelles found in plant versus animal cells. Good luck!